here from you are probably familiar with is the largest grassroots organization uh, focused on environmental and climate issues in the United States with chapters all around the country. Our top priorities are climate action, justice, restoring and protecting public lands and natural ecosystems and democracy. Clean Energy Transition Institute is a think tank uh, that has been started by a colleague of mine that's doing really detailed work on how you actually view pathways. Especially for those of you in the Northwest, I recommend checking it out. We've done a lot and want to do a lot more, specifically in the areas of sustainable agriculture and biofuels and areas like that. So the obligatory slides on why you should care. Uh, you know, one of my favorite spokespeople in this area, you may have heard of Greta Thunberg, Teenage, her from, from uh, Sweden, um, was speaking to the Davos conference saying, I want you to act like the house is on fire, because it is. And you world leaders are leaving this existential crisis to us children, because you continue to act like it's just business as usual. If you'd rather have, you know, phrases from an octogenarian, you can listen to the lesson tones of David Attenborough from the Nature Series, who's, you know, talked about how the collapse of civilization is really on the line. And it's not just climate. It's, it's the potential collapse, the ongoing collapse of species, of our ecosystems, of all the things that not only make this world enjoyable and make this world fun to hike in and live in, but make life itself, or civilization itself at least, impossible if it's allowed to be continuing. So, you know, before going on from that, it's really easy to go, okay, that's a bummer, and I guess there's nothing we can do. There's lots of people that are out there who are saying, we're not on the brink, we're past it, you know, game over for the climate. You hear people say it's too late to make a difference. And I think the key takeaways on that are first, this is a human caused problem. There are solutions that are actually profitable and that uh, we'll talk more later about ways your specific industry can make a difference. There are solutions that, that we have in our control that will move from dirty, polluting industries to cleaner things. It's not like a medium, which you could be hitting us. Second, every tenth of a degree, every species that's being lost makes a difference. The game is never over until we're over. Uh, and third again, we have the ability to really make that difference. So, is, is your industry an important contributor to solutions, or is it a climate villain? Uh, and you know, it's interesting, if you read the literature out there today, you can see both of those arguments. There's a lot of information um, out there talking about how hemp can be, and how hemp in some circumstances is a tremendously sustainable crop, which could be a replacement for all sorts of more polluting, more damaging inputs into our systems. But at the same time, hemp and its cousin cannabis, and I think you all know that a slight increase in THC isn't the difference, can be a, a very polluting, um, crop and supply chain and can create real impacts. And so I think the key takeaway from this is, you know, you really all need to work with your trade associations, work with your research institutions and others to figure out how you can make a difference and grow it a sustainable way. Now, I guess one question, you're all listening to me, so I guess you care, but one question is, why should you care? And I, I want to do a little audience participation. How many of you got into this industry or are getting into the industry because you saw this as a way of potentially making a difference in the world? And how many of you really are only doing this because you see this as a really profitable area to be involved? Good. So I'll say to all the first of you, you're my kind of people. You know, having folks in any industry who really care to make a difference uh, is there. And I think that if this is one of the industries where you really can potentially supply a lot of more polluting things. And to the brave souls who answered that they're only in it for the money, great. Uh, 
There is a lot of evidence in every sector that shows that companies that focus on sustainability, focus on less polluting aspects, are actually more profitable. And as we'll talk about later, there's specific ways that you can make money growing hemp in a way that's quiet, climate friendly and more sustainable. So, you know, why is hemp potentially a very sustainable crop? The simple news is that it is a crop which can be grown with fewer inputs, which can have a deep, which does have a deep root system, and which can sequester carbon from the atmosphere into the soils, uh, and do that in a way that has fewer disruptive inputs, fewer need for, less need for energy, less need for, uh, for fertilizers or for uh, excessive irrigation or other things like that, and can supplant other kinds of uh, materials in a way that really makes a difference. You can see this quote here from uh, Morris Beagle with the WAFDA that really puts, captures it well. And that's why a lot of people have been hyping hemp as being tremendously, and by itself, a weed that will be a great climate solution. So why does that matter in the climate equation? You know, groups like the Sierra Club and most folks working on climate action have and continue to put most of our focus on 